This is Dr. Chris's radio show, 91.3 FM, WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts. And I'm here sitting down with a living legend, one of the creators of one of the best comic books ever created in a group of characters, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And also for you science fiction fantasy horror people out there, he was the owner of Heavy Metal as well. Kevin Eastman, thank you for coming on the show with us, Kevin, sitting down. Oh, thanks very much for having me. Thrilled to be here. Um, just to touch upon heavy metal a little bit, because I'm not too familiar with that other than the two cartoons. What was your little bit? What was your involvement in heavy metal besides being the owner? Well, it's funny because um, in 1977, when I bought the first issue of heavy metal off the newsstand, it was at a time in my life when I was kind of growing out of the current kinds of comic books that are out there. They still seem to be written for a much younger audience, um, but I still love comic books. Comic books is a medium. And so when Heavy Metal came along, I discovered that there were artists, um, you know, all over the United States, Richard Corbin, Von Bode, underground publishers that are writing and drawing stories for an older audience. But more importantly, they were publishing, they showed me um, all the European artists that I had just never been aware of, you know, Mobius and Belial and the Schuiten brothers and Jodorowsky. And it reminded me that any kind of story you could ever imagine, um, you could tell in comic books. And it really re a time in my life and it really rekindled my, my, my romance and, and my passion for comic books so I was even more determined than ever to be a cartoonist be a comic book artist storyteller when I grew up so it was a huge inspiration to me do you believe in fate? I, I do I mean it, it is it's funny I mean to continue on the heavy metal story just for a bit it's when I discovered heavy metal you know like I mentioned Richard Corbin and Von Bode and other cell publishers um, uh, that were featured in heavy metal magazine it led me to um uh, seek out more of their original self-published work, and I became aware of this whole underground comics movement. I mean, there are publishers like Last Gas Press, um, Kitchen Sink Press, Ripoff Press, and a slew of people that were publishing you know, underground comics. Ah, Kitchen only... Sink Press. Yeah, Kitchen Sink Press. You know, the kinds of comics you'd only find in, like, you know, the equivalent of what you call a head shop, or, you know, um, the rare comic book store. In those days, I mean, when I grew up in Maine, the closest comic book store I could buy underground comic books was in... Um, uh, uh, Boston. And so upon discovering these underground publishers, I was like, man, I don't want to work for Marvel or DC. I want to, I want to be a self-publisher. I want to be an underground publisher. I want to write and draw and tell my own stories, my own ideas. Um, and it was because of heavy metal discovering underground publishers when Pete and I met and wanted to um, uh, publish the Turtles. We didn't want to sell it to another company. We wanted to publish it ourselves and own and control our rights. And so uh, it allowed us to control everything that was done with the turtles, but more importantly, profit from everything that was done with the turtles. So I used turtle money to buy heavy metal. I heard that. So like heavy metal. I didn't hear yeah, that. So it's <laughs> so, so now that's fate. I had heard that you guys did try and pitch turtles to Marvel and DC. That's not true. That's not true. Okay, that is not true. That's not true. Um, did you guys try to pitch it originally to uh, also Archie because you, they eventually picked up the cartoon book? No? Okay. It wasn't pitched to anybody. It was actually, you know, not to uh, uh, digress, but it was um, we... After we'd self-published the Turtles, and the Turtles, I think, around issues five, six, or seven, um, you know, we were selling a lot, a lot of Turtle comic books, and we met a, an editor from Marvel at one of the trade shows we were doing, and uh, he said, hey, did you ever think of doing Turtles in Color? Um, maybe we could work out a deal, and he worked for Marvel, um, so he said, why don't you come down to Marvel and talk to us about doing, you know, the Turtles in Color, doing colored versions of them, and we had a very short conversation with them, and also a publisher called First Comics, and we ended up going with First Comics, and that's where those first color editions of the Turtles came out. So it was a discussion about a color reprint with Marvel, no, nothing, nothing really more uh, per se. And I bring up Fate because, like in the documentary, and that great book that just came out from uh, Insight Editions, yeah. that that, that thing's I completely forgot about that. That's fantastic. I that. Right oh god, I, I read that cover to cover like a child when I was a kid, and the. At it, the novelization of the first movie came out. My parents turned and said, "Turn off your light and go to bed." I was underneath the flat with the flashlight reading oh, that I love book, it. I and I did that same thing. I was up all night until like it was three in the morning. I was like, "I've got to go to bed." And reading that Insight Edition book, that was fantastic. Uh, but I, I mentioned Fate because it, it, it said that you were like on a bus and you saw the gobbledygook and you picked it up and it was a phone number to Peter and you called him and said, "Hey, are you looking for an artist?" <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> some of you know the, that's what the Paramount documentary said. Yeah, um, yeah some of the versions is the actual real truth 100% version is um, I used to work at a grocery store in um, the in lobster Am place what's that the lobster place well I worked at the lobster place in Maine but what, that was in Maine when I moved to Massachusetts I worked at a, in a, a, a grocery store called Price Chopper um, uh, in, uh, in, Ma in Amherst Massachusetts and I was taking the bus from um, uh, Amherst over to, to Northampton because they had a comic book store over there and on the bus I found there was a magazine called SCAT S-C-A-T yes. 
And not to be confused with a <laughs> adult material. <laughs> That's right. It's not that kind of thing. No. Um, thank goodness. No. Um, and in, within the pages of Scat, um, uh, I saw some cartoons by a bunch of different local cartoonists. Peter Laird was one of them. And I also saw that their office was in Northampton, Massachusetts. So I went into their office with my portfolio a couple weeks later and tried to pitch them some of my cartoon ideas. And they had just sort of started moving away from that kind of publishing. But they said, uh, kindly, they said, wow, you know, we're not really doing that anymore, but you draw the same kind of crazy shit that this guy Peter Laird draws. You should meet him. And so they, you know, back in those days, you know, couldn't afford phones. There were no cell phones. So I, they gave me his address, and I wrote him a letter. I wrote him a letter and said, I'm new in town, and I love comics, and Jack Kirby, would you like to get together? And he wrote me a letter back and said, yeah, why don't you come over? And so I went over, and, and we hit it off from, from the first meeting, and, and almost that same day started bantering ideas and, 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 and started working together. And that's fate. And that's fate. That is true fate right 100% there. 100% fate. Yeah. I, I, I hear that story. I saw that in the documentary. And I was like, God, that is such a great story. I mean, so that true. is that is amazing how they found each other like that. And then they just were like, this is never going to sell. <laughs> well, so, you know, you, what's even weirder is like, you know, even after that first meeting and we, you know, because I was still cooking lobsters in Maine at the, on the summer. So after, you know, Pete and I hung out for the winter. You hate lobster now? Huh? What's that? You hate lobster now. <laughs> I never, never liked it. Never liked it. My family and so many people go nuts at it, but it's just never, I call them pigeons of the sea. It just never really worked for me. Um, but, uh, so I left Massachusetts and moved to, back to uh, Gunquit, Maine, where I was working cooking lobsters. And Pete met a woman who's now his wife, Janine, who had a job teaching at Dartmouth, um, which is, so they moved to Dover, New Hampshire, which was 20 minutes from where I lived in Maine. It was just a complete fluke. And so, you know, when Pete got to, uh, um, to Dover, he sent me a note and said, hey, we're just 20 minutes away. Now we can, you know, get together regularly and, 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 and banter ideas and come up with stuff. And, and I said, this is awesome. And then when I finished cooking lobsters that summer in uh, uh, September of 1983, they had had a roommate that moved out. And he said, well, we've got an extra room. Why don't you, you know, come in, become one of our roommates, and we can create this little studio. And that's where we came up with the name Mirage Studios. Because ah. it, it wasn't really a studio. It was our living room, which was the Mirage. But I moved in, and it was I moved there in there you know, late September 1983. And November of 1983 is when the first turtle drawings evolved, and we came up with the idea. You saw the forever... Um Turtles Forever movie, and, I love it. and at the very end, it segues into the reality. Yeah, we did the voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I saw, yeah, I heard that. I was like, no, that is great. But it's um, when because Peter did worked on the two thousand, we call it the two thousand series, and uh, yeah, and, uh, Lloyd uh, Goldfine was one of the main production guys, and he's just fantastic. I love that series, and he, he approached me with this idea. He said, "We're developing this turtle movie, and it's going to be you know the original '80s turtles meets the two thousand turtles meets the black and white turtles." And he sort of told me what the story was, and. And he said, I'd love you and Pete to do this little cameo, this live action segue at the end. And I said, Lloyd, this is going to either be the most brilliant movie ever or it's going to be a total bomb. Uh, and it turned out to be the latter. It was fantastic. It's one of my favorite turtle movies, turtle, favorite turtle isms. Um, so, yeah, that's one of my, you know, Turtles Forever just rocks. I love that series. That it movie. was much better than Michael Bay's movie. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I like Michael Bay's movie. Uh, I worked on it for four years and, uh, you know, worked with Jonathan Leesman and the whole production team. And, you know, we tried very, very hard to make an awesome movie. And I like a lot of how it came out. So. I like parts of it. Yeah. No, it's like, you know, the, it's the hardcore, you know, we appreciate all the different fan perspectives and all that stuff, so. Um, if there's one character in the entire story that you would uh, identify with of all the different Turtles stuff, whatever, which character would that be? I think in um, every character, not just Turtles, it could be a villain, you could be like, I have tendencies to put on black garb and fight, you know. Steal things as a <laughs> well, so, yeah, you know, Casey, Casey Jones is hand down one of my favorite human characters. Raphael, you know, although Michelangelo is the first turtle drawn, and I love all the turtles. Um, uh, Raphael, um, especially, is one of my favorite to tell stories with because he's more predictable. You can go more places with him. Um, but I love doing Casey and Raphael stories, and I always imagined that you know I'd be like a Casey Jones character. And even though Casey was created before, there's a movie that came out in the mid '80s called. Um, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yes, which is one of my favorite movies. And, it and is mine my, my too. Yeah. Favorite John Carpenter movie. <laughs> um, but seeing uh, 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 Kurt Russell as uh, Jack Burton, you know that to me was the perfect Casey Jones. And every time I write a Casey story, I always think of what would Jack Burton do. So it's a like, big inspiration. So. Having seen photos of you from the eighties, I thought maybe you modeled Casey Jones off yourself with a long, you know, eighties style. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, a long time ago. And <laughs> uh, I may always make Casey with bigger muscles, like I pretended I had bigger muscles or something. Yeah. We we do we cover a lot of horror movies. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Oh, uh, man, 
I guess pro- you know it's probably more of a sci-fi movie, but I I think it's a horror movie. Is the thing again, John Connor? Yes. It's by you know I have many. I love horror movies. You know, Thirty Days a Night, and you know, Twenty Eight Days Later, and you know, just old and schlocky to more contemporary and gruesome. And uh, but I think uh, the thing is one of my favorite uh, sci-fi horror movies. It's, it's or horror movie in general. I love that film. How did you get back involved with the Turtles at IDW? Um, my good friend uh, Ted Adams. I've known him you know forever. We've been in the business together, and he was one of the co-founders of IDW. And when they picked up the licensing rights from uh, Nickelodeon slash Viacom um, to publish the, the, the Turtle series, um, uh, he called me up and said, "Hey, would you love to do? You know, would love to have you do some covers and do some other stuff in this new Turtle series you're doing." And I said. What do you got in mind for the story? What are you guys doing? He said, well, come down and meet head writer um, and head editor. Um, Tom Walls is the head writer. And Bobby Kernow is the, is, the, is the main editor. I said, well, so I came down for lunch, and they sort of told me what they were doing for this new relaunch. interpretation, this new relaunch, where they got bad parts of, you know, black and white, and the cartoon, and the movies, and all this stuff, and came with this awesome platform, and the tweaks to the origin story, which I adored, I loved. Which um, are kind of in the movie, the new movie. Yeah, no, it's more, yeah, that's the, the, what we did in the comic books is more. I thought maybe the sequel will start explaining that doing the whole, like, oh, their their reincarnation of feudal Japan, I was like. I know, that was Tom's idea, and it was uh, fantastic. But no, I, 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 when I started working on the turtle, um, that was me, keep something. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects. Um, when I started working, Hi-yah! Um, when I started working on the new series, um, it reminded me of um, how much I miss drawing the turtles, how much I love drawing the turtles, and how you know many more stories, turtle stories, I had to tell. And again, working with uh, Tom and Bobby and, and the whole IDW team is just is fantastic. We have the best time ever, and thanks to the fans for supporting it because you know it allows us to continue doing you know these great exploring these great avenues and other things that we don't think have been explored in the turtle universe. So. Yeah, it's 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 one of my top three books that every month I'm like, oh my god, finally the new turtles is out. What? I don't have Kevin's cover. Uh, Can you oh. please put that back in my box until Kevin's cover comes in? <laughs> and I made sure I have every single cover that you did. Thank you so much. Because that that means uh, that means so much to me that you came back to do the covers. Now people are questioning like, oh, he's done the annuals. Would you do like a mini series that you yourself would just draw? Yeah, well, the annual is, um, the 2012 annual was 60 pages. That was literally the longest turtle story I've ever written, drawn. That's an exhausting book and great. I lo- it was, had so much fun. But, you know, usually I'd work with the, the awesome Peter Laird or Simon Business stuff, but that was the longest one I'd done completely by myself. And then I did the same uh, this year. We came up with the new um, uh, Renette, the new time-traveling story, yes. and that was 48 pages. And I'm probably going to do, um, we're looking at a four-issue series that I'll um, write and draw for next year. I, you know, I always work with Tom. I mean, I saw Tom's such a great... Soundboard and editor and Bobby's great, so they sort of help my like go off on a tangent in some of my stories. They bring me back in, but yeah, we, we still even though I do all the heavy lifting on those annuals, it's it's still a team effort. So. And what is your probably and this is probably our final question? What is your favorite turtle story of all time? And that could be even one you've done or haven't done. You know, I guess it's it's there's so many. And I like so many of them for so many different reasons. Um, you know, I mean, every single issue that Peter and I did together are just, you know, the foundation, those are the most awesome, and, and those are the real heart and soul of the Turtle universe. Um, Turtles 14 was my favorite. I worked on with Eric Talbot, but it was a story I wrote and penciled that was based on... Um, of the old series? Of the old series, okay. the original series. It was There's a lot of Turtle 14s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, yeah, Turtles 14 of the original Mirage series. Yeah, that's what you're volume right. Volume 1. Yeah. We're on Volume 6 now, I believe. Uh, Turtles 18, which was uh, the Mark Bodie. Kevin and me and Eric and Mark Bodie did the Bruce Lee tribute show. Yes. Movies. But out of you know, all the different versions of the Turtles that have done entertainment, comics and otherwise, the first Turtles movie by far is my favorite all-time version of the of the Turtles. Um, and, you know, honestly, this new Nickelodeon series, um, it's just, it's fantastic. I love it. I think Ciro and, and Rich and everybody that's working on the new series have just done a fantastic version, you know, new version, updated version, sort of hitting the reset button and then bring them back out to the world in a way that's, I think, very clever, very funny, and, you know, we still get to mine Brilliant. all these old, you know, Leatherhead and Rat King and Rats coming back, and there's so many, so many great isms that we can bring to that Turtle universe. It's, it's an absolute blast. It's a hoot to watch. It's horror fans. We love the uh, the fact that John Cassier and, and Robert England in the same awesome? episode. That was great. Yeah, no, that, and that's, you know, and I think that's so, you know, Courtney and I have done, you know, almost 25 shows this year, and it's been the 30th anniversary, and and it's the, the coolest thing, whether, you know, in different parts of the world, in different parts of the states, um, the Turtles fans are 
are awesome. They're intense. They're sincere. They're, they're they have so many great memories. And you know, you meet a celebrity, and they like, ah, oh, you know, like these guys. It's like I'd love to do a voice. I love the turtles. And so there's so much love for the characters. It's really, you know, gives us, you know, just makes these shows so much fun and upbeat. And we sort of love the energy and the fans. And they've given me an awesome job for the last 30 years. So. Site. That is pretty cool that you get to, you know, ride the turtle wave all the way to the very end and just be like, this is, yeah. you know, I'm very proud. This is what yeah, I get yeah, to do. 20 years, I'll be, you know, they'll, sh- they'll bring me to one of these shows and my depends and my wheelchair. <laughs> and I'll be like, I sit still, Roger. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to be back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy turtle creator is on the news or whatever for smacking some writer in the head with his cane. <laughs> <laughs> you went nuts. <laughs> through the pizza in their face. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure having you on the show, Kevin. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, and uh, have a good holiday. Yes, you yeah, too. Yeah. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah.